As many of you know, um, we decided to do something different. Instead of some grand vision from an expert, what we'd rather do is actually try to do something different and interact with many of you. So we started an experiment called 2.0. Well, what's 2.0? It's called the semantic web, it's called social media, it's called lots of things, but they, these are umbrella terms for various activities that integrate technology, social interaction, and the production of content. It's the next big thing, if you haven't heard about it. Um, some think that it's really big. Uh, I thought it was so big that it was probably the biggest shift in culture this century so far. Now we're only nine years into it, but we wanted to think about 2.0, and, and maybe the best way to think about it is to define it uh, by remembering what came before. Anything that came before the dot-com bubble of 2001. Remember when websites were static billboards? That virtual communication, it, then it was just like any other mass media, one way. Interactivity was serial. You get an email chain letter, you'd add your name, and you'd send it on to the next person very much like the assembly line of a hundred and some years ago. Um, so really, the virtual world, in many ways, was just then a replica of the real world. But that was about to change. Um, back then, things were defined, uh, people were defined as content producers. So you had network news, publishing houses, political leaders. All of these were generators of content that were consumed by some others, some passive audience. And the options to talk back were equally one way. You could respond to a survey, you could write a letter to the editor, or you could vote every four years. Terms like feedback and input were used, and I think that those terms were very telling. You know, feedback is a technical term for the noise generated when a speaker's output is fed back through a microphone. And input is a scientific term that implies the predictable entry of a known quantity into a system. These are mechanistic, deterministic, almost, metaphors. So the media, although it was the dawn of the 21st century, had its feet firmly planted in the 16th century with Descartes' clockwork model of the universe, um, the, the, the machine. And people then were treated and talked about in terms of the machine. Um, but all of that would start to break down with 2.0. 2.0 is a shift from one-way communication to multi-ways and to networks, <coughs> to interactivity and dialogue. Cycles of iteration accelerate. Collaboration is enabled. And now, user content can actually jump platforms and media using links, tags, references, things like retweets. I can send you an email to tell you to check the new entry on my blog in which I've embedded links. Someone's friend might read on a wall and repost it on their own walls. Someone tweets it, which also has a link, and the receiver of that tweet might retweet to their contact list. My content is posted, reposted, referred to, broadcast to friends who in turn, actively or passively, generate awareness of it to their friends lists. Some of those people retransmit or they respond to the original post. And the response cycle starts again, and again, and again. This is the power of 2.0 and the interactivity. Content echoes and ripples through not just one form of media, like a blog and a web page, but from blog, to email, to personal web profile, to cell phone, to print, to fax, to voicemail, virtual and even actual conversation, etc. It goes on. Um, developers are finding ways to increase. Probably every month, there's a new application, a new way of interacting and linking all of these different ways of communicating. So content travels. It also can be pulled by users who follow these links as questions of inquiry occur to them. This is a very different way of interacting with content literally at your fingertips. So gone are the days of posting a website as an electronic billboard on some off-ramp of the superhighway, hoping that somebody will find you and stop by. So how is this changing how people communicate? Since the late 90s, the internet was heralded as a democratizing force. People had, for the first time, access to all kinds of information. It was the reverse, in many ways, of broadcast. But 
question was, could your voice be noticed? Could you be found? It was still hard to be heard because it was hard to be found. Much more recently with social media, there too has been a noticeable shift with things, people would be uh, using anonymous avatars or pseudonyms as screen names. And in the last, I'd say, three years, we're starting to see all of a sudden people's real names, LinkedIn profiles. Facebook does not allow pseudonyms. You have to use your real name. So what I'm seeing is people are now taking responsibility in this virtual world in a very different way. It is a public space, but it is also a space of responsibility. So the possibility is offered to everyone to produce content, and that means that potentially everyone has a voice. You used to have a voice, say, around 2003, the cutting edge was moveon.org. Um, you would cut, that then that was the cutting edge. You would send an email, you would join a petition, and it was a very effective way of interacting. But today, in, in just about the last three years, it's become far easier and quicker for your content to be found through this network of references, links, reposts, posts on walls, etc. So 2.0 isn't technology, it isn't a version of the web, it really is a new way of communication. And so the internet can really changes how we communicate. It's not just about the message sent from one to many, but about many sending communications to many. Content can translate into conversation, transforming people from content consumers in a response to a broadcast into content producers, who in turn are their own broadcasters, or maybe better said, netcasters. And I may just have coined a phrase. So 2.0 provides us with profoundly different kinds of tools for the democratization of content and information. And knowledge is not just presented, but it's actually constructed through the interactions enabled by 2.0. So this online activity translates into the offline world from business to news outlets to reference sources and fundraising. The action started in Web 2.0 using social media, translating to reaching bigger and more diverse audiences in shorter amounts of time. Amounts of time. Great example of this would be President Obama's uh, campaign. He used online tools with MyBarackObama.com, my and it was heralded as using the web in such interactive ways that also motivated real-world actions and pulled a non-frontrunner candidate to win the presidency. Now, as he governs, he's using 2.0 to interact with the real world as seen through his recent forum on jobs and economic growth. And in fact, there's going to be an announcement today of a meeting that he held last week where he used internet channels, web, social networks, he actually has a web, uh, the White House has a Facebook page, and he's asked not just to collect that information in Washington, but he's asked mayors across the country to do the same by hosting forums in their own cities. So there'll be flyers on the back table about an event tomorrow night that's actually trying to respond to the president's request for more input. What the president's showing is that he knows how to reach more people and how to make them participants. He's giving people a voice by asking them to participate, He's trying to construct knowledge out of what's working in cities and towns and pull us out of this economic crisis that started because of reasons that even economists don't really understand, much less know what to do about. People are important, and that's why he wants to hear from them. And in doing so, he's using social media to help him do his job better. And think about it. When someone watches a video of this talk or a transcript on a blog, that link will take you there. Something.com is now part of our very lexicon and allows to jump from a face-to-face -face conversation like this into a connection in the virtual world, sometimes literally in seconds. Does anybody have a Blackberry or a cell phone? You can get into that right now. So like the president's uses, social media are being used all over the world in public administration, education, health, leisure, and now we're seeing terminology like government 2.0. Education 2.0, healthcare 2.0. So, now that we're a decade into the 21st century, will we see Buffalo 